Hello viewers, this is Dave out in Western Pennsylvania, USA, and I'm in social isolation when uh, preparing, while preparing uh, this video, like millions of others. And uh, in between um, preparing tape lectures for my students, I decided I'd put together a small video showing some of my uh, research. And uh, I'm an amateur artist, self-trained, and I try to combine my interests in chemistry along with uh, uh, my interests in art. So what I want to do here is show you a paint formulation I'm developing. Uh, it's emulsified cold wax. And uh, what I do is blend a cold wax, commercial or some of the ones I prepare, along with a surfactant, Dahmer resin in linseed oil, and either an oil-based paint, commercial paint, or I mull my own pigments, or even using a watercolor. In this case, I have a Daler and Roni uh, yellow ochre tube watercolor. I've taken uh, cakes and uh, heated them up in the microwave oven in water as well. But I just want to give you an idea of the type of research I'm doing here. So I utilize uh, plastic cups that you can get from Amazon, uh, eBay. Make sure a tightly fitting cap because you certainly don't want the linseed oil polymerizing on you. They call it drying. Of course, it's polymerizing in air with oxygen. And you don't want the water to escape if you're using a water-based paint, a watercolor. Okay, to get things started, we will go in and out of focus. I'm using an Epson uh, to capture this uh, video at my desktop at home. And I'll put in uh, an amount like that. I work with ACO art art cards, editions, originals, that must be limited to a three and a half by two and a half inch area, let's say on Bristol or uh, watercolor paper. Um, there are exceptions. Uh, I sometimes use three and a half by three and a half, and I'll show you that later. Um, so I'm, I'm making small amounts of paints. These emulsions I have found are stable at least two weeks at 20 degrees Celsius if you keep them tightly covered. Uh, when the time comes, if it looks like you need to add a little bit water, you can do it dropwise. The key is to mix well. Okay, we have the commercial paint in there. The next thing I'm going to add is a non-ionic surfactant. This is Turgitol. Let me focus that. Turgitol. I get it from Sigma Aldrich, chemical supplier. A turgitol. It's a non-ionic surfactant. I sometimes use span 20 or span 60. You are more likely to use soy lecithin. You can obtain that from eBay or Amazon. I think more readily available to the general artist lecithin. And uh, that, uh, if you use that as your surfactant, make sure you wet it well with water first before blending in paint. I've done, it'll work fine. Uh, I just happen to like the Turgitol. Now, what I will do uh, is add uh, a small amount. That's why I'm making the video. You know, when I say small amount, well, that varies, but let's say about this much. Watch. Oh a little less than the volume of the watercolor paint in this video. That's my surfactant. Uh, not a harmful material at all. Now, the castor, uh, the cold wax, it's commercially available, uh, but you can make your own and that's what I do. This particular blend is a castor wax, castor oil hydrogenated to a rather hard wax. And that is a one-to-one -one blend with a commercially available emulsifying wax, emulsifying wax used in personal care products. And um, for 30 grams of this blend, I add uh, three grams of Dahmer resin, and I add uh, about 15 milliliters of a C16 to C20 
beta branched alcohol, primary alcohol, called a Gerbe alcohol, G U E R B T. Marcel Gerbe was the uh, French chemist. Gerbe alcohols are used in personal care products. Uh, you don't have to use that one. Uh, this particular batch does. And as I said, you can use the commercial, uh, commercially available cold wax. I'll add about this much of my blend using this spoon with that uh, to deliver that volume. I'll drop that right in. The key here is to mix well and not give up on it. In the beginning, it looks like a mess, but the key is to stir well. Okay, we have that in there. Now, the next thing to add, and it's so easy to forget one of these components. We're going to add conventional Dahmer resin, 20% uh, mass volume in linseed oil. I heat up the linseed oil and slowly dissolve the Dahmer resin at about 55, 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, with good stirring, it will be dissolved. You may want to filter it to remove small residuals such as insect components or soil. And then we're going to add about that much of the varnish in linseed oil. You want to vary this when you make up your own formulations. This is just a guess. And then you're going to mix this up really well. You don't be afraid to stir it vigorously for about two or three minutes. I'm at... Uh, I'm about 21 degrees Celsius right now in my house. I'm uh, gonna mix that up really well. Don't quit on it, but you don't want lumps of wax, so you really wanna stir. Now you can do impasto. What I found is if I add chitosan, which is derived from chitin, from crustaceans, insect exoskeleton, it can provide a beautiful impasto and you can make that as thick as you'd like. Here, I'm not adding that. We'll just see how this paint works. Keep it tightly stoppered, and you can always add more water, perhaps if you want to create a wash for uh, maybe a stream or a sky scene. You may just want to add more water then. And uh, this is mixing up very, very nicely. All right, now, I'll put this to the side. Get that out of harm's way. And the next thing we'll do is uh, allow you to take a look at this. Okay, get an idea of the uh, um, homogeneity of it. Now, I have a sketch here and it's a sketch of, remember I'm self-trained, you know, learned like millions of people for relaxation. Um, here I have a sketch of a barn owl, which you would find in the United States. Let me go to focus. Okay, that's good for our purposes. I have a granddaughter who loves owls, so I uh, oftentimes find myself sketching and painting them and, and giving it to her for her collection. But uh, I'm using a triple zero, inexpensive paintbrush from China. Oh, these, gosh, I like uh, eBay. Uh, pen, up like a penny uh, per brush, and I can use them two or three times. When you clean these uh, the brushes from this paint formulation, use Murphy soap oil. Mix it one-to-one -one with water, Murphy soap, soap oil. It cleans the brushes beautifully. And then uh, a little bit of warm water, soap, conventional soap, and uh, let them dry. Okay, so now we'll apply this. Let me go down here. And we just want to get an eye. It's better than a swatch, huh, to show you this. And I'll give you a close-up. Now, it dries to the touch, oh, maybe in an hour, hour and a half at 20 degrees Celsius. So you have time to blend. I wouldn't wait till the next day. You have to experiment. But you should have plenty of time to get in, much more time than you would with acrylic acrylics and uh, this is going on very nicely now I am using of course uh, as I told you uh, yellow ochre and the ochres uh, the earth pigments usually uh, love to make paints 
but I've had good success with varying uh, water-based commercial color pigments. Okay. All right, that's going on very nice. I paint, foundation, and brush must work together, as you know, and they are with this paint. Okay. Well, this will give you an idea. Okay. Now, let's see if we can get you a close-up. And let's see if focus helps. Okay. And, uh, of course, a trained artist is going to have much greater success. I'm approaching the table... Um, as uh, a research chemist, a chemistry professor, but an amateur artist. But um, I think it, this paint formulation is worth investigating. And uh, as I said, if you add chitosan or clay, you can make uh, varying levels of impasto formulation. So I thank you very much for watching. And uh, let me show you one other that I'm working on. Uh, that's over here. These are three and a half by three and a half inch. Uh, coaster tiles and this is what I'm working on right now um, I just have to finish painting the lady now who's laying there with her black hair over the side and uh, I'm working on that and uh, I've been using these paint formulations in the hands of a professional or uh, experienced artist I think that they would be able to present these paint formulations at their best but this will give you an idea of what you can do particularly if you're an amateur working at home and you like experimenting with paint. And I do know that many, many artists love experimenting as much as research scientists. That, no doubt, no doubt. Thank you so much for watching. I will include my website in case you want to get a hold of me. And uh, any suggestions, feel free to upload them. And I'll be putting up more videos as we uh, move along. Stay healthy and uh, bye for now.